Hey, good afternoon everyone. This is Joe from the Northeastern Native Plant Digest. And today we're going to be talking about compost. All right, I can't believe it's Wednesday already. This week's flying. <laughs> so today I wanted to talk about compost and uh, why we should compost, why you should think about composting if, you, if you're not composting, and some of the benefits of compost. Uh, so compost is, a, is the process of decomposition, and it's, it's a process where we take uh, yard scraps like grass cuttings, uh, cuttings uh, from your or pots that have maybe uh, are done for the year. Uh, you know, if you're in the spring and you're cleaning up and you're cutting down your perennials, or you're cutting down your annuals, you can, instead of throwing those, uh, those, that waste material in the, in the trash, you can start a compost pile and what it's going to do, it's going to break down and provide you with a, a wonderful free source of nutrient rich organic matter, which is great for plants. Uh, so today I'm just going to show you guys my compost process. Here. Uh, I have a bin here and a pile over here. I built this bin. This is a two bin system I built uh, probably like five years ago and I use it to uh, uh, put all of my yard waste and all of my uh, kitchen scraps for the most part. I'll go over that later. Uh, and, and I use this to, to create, uh, like I said, nutrient rich organic matter and then in turn I take that and I can spread it around the base of my plants or I can work it into uh, some of my, my garden beds and the plants really love it. It's, it's a great source of nutrients. So uh, what is the process? Uh, so what, what do we uh, want to do? What are the type of things that we can put into a compost bin? So uh, really, you can put almost any uh, organic thing into a compost bin. Uh, there are some caveats, and I'm going to go over those right now. Uh, so as far as things that you can add, food scraps of all sorts you can add to your compost bin. Uh, you can add vegetables uh, if, you, if you're cutting up potatoes for a meal and you got the potato skins. Uh, coffee grinds are another great source of, uh, of, uh, organic, of, of material that you can add to your compost bin. Uh, another great thing are uh, uh, eggshells. I love to add it. crushed up eggshells. They add calcium. Uh, you know, sometimes we buy salad and we might not go through the whole salad uh, mixture before it goes bad, so I throw those into the compost bin. Uh, uh, corn, uh, uh, when I shuck corn, I, I use those and throw those in the compost bin. Uh, grass clippings, you can use grass clippings in compost bins, and these are called your greens. These are your green items. Uh, so if you're not familiar with composting, you might hear some terms thrown around uh, like greens and browns. And what is that exactly? Greens are like uh, nitrogen-rich uh, uh, materials, uh, like grass cuttings. Think of grass cuttings, for example. They're high in nitrogen, uh, they're green, you bring them back into your compost bin. And, uh, and you throw it in there, and your browns are going to be things like uh, these cut stems and flower stems from perennials or perennial grasses that I cleaned up in the spring. Uh, it's also going to be leaves. Uh, if you shred up your leaves or you put leaves into your compost bin in the fall, those are considered your browns. Now, there are a lot of discussions on, on what kind of ratios you should have, uh, which is beyond the scope of this video. There's all kinds of information online. Generally, uh, you... I guess best practices is you want to do about a two thirds to uh, to uh, to one third as far as greens and browns. So you want to have you want to try to have more greens than browns, and uh, that's going to help create that heat. The nitrogen is going to create that heat in the compost pile, which really uh, kind of speeds up the decomposition process. Uh, so some of the things that you can do with your compost bin uh, to speed up that decomposition process, like I was talking about is uh, you can add a lot of volume. You want to add a lot of bulk. Uh, you want to add a lot of material. Uh, you want to have, like I said, about two-thirds green material. And you want to try and keep it uh, moist. You really want to try and keep it moist. And you want to turn it as often as you can. That's going to speed up the decomposition process. And it's really going to get the, the microbes uh, going. It's going to get that, uh, that microbial life breaking down and the worms in there. Uh, there, that's called a hot process. There's also a cold process. This is the terms that they kind of throw around, where you just throw this stuff in there and you just let it, you just let it rot and you just let it decomp, de, uh, decompose on its own. That's kind of the process that I take. I do turn mine periodically, probably not as much as I should. Uh, I do try to uh, water them from time to time, 
but uh, you know typically what I like to do is this is this pile on the left is my pile that's that's uh, almost in the process of being done uh, especially from the bottom I have used from this already this year this one on the right is a little bit has a little bit more to go uh, I got to get in here and turn it I think I actually overloaded it with uh, brown material from stems and stuff so it's really kind of getting hard to turn it's kind of hard to turn sometimes and then this one's just leftover dirt that I had uh, from digging out an extra bed it's really got a lot of clay in it so I'm gonna let this sit and put more grass over it over time and then hopefully keep turning it and work it in so you can uh, uh, another thing that you want to keep in mind uh, is uh, to get the process going if, if you have a new pile is is you want to try and inoculate your pile with beneficial bacteria there are a couple different ways you can you can do that uh, one of them is you can uh, add beer to the pile. If you add beer to the pile, it will inoculate it with beneficial bacteria. You can also use old compost. If you have some old compost, that'll get those beneficial bacteria in there. And then another way, which uh, you know might not be the most popular way, but you can actually use uh, human urine, and uh, that'll also inoculate the pile and get that microbial process uh, going. So I'm going to go ahead and add these in here. What I like to do is I like to dig a spot out. Uh, and then bury the stuff. And now a couple of the, now I talked about stuff that we could add. Now there are things that you don't want to add to a compost bin. Uh, and that includes dairy products. You don't want to add dairy products like milk and cheese. And you don't want to add uh, meat products or bones because that's really going to cause rot. It's going to attract uh, rat, it could attract rats to your pile, things like that. And uh, you don't want to add those things. So I'm going to go ahead and get these added and then I'm going to uh, uh, cover them up. So really, the coffee grounds, I'm just going to sprinkle around, all around in there. Actually, I even sprinkle these just straight around my plants, especially hydrangeas. It's a really good source of, uh, it'll uh, acidify the soil for you. So this is, this is all the, so that's all the eggs and all the stuff that we didn't eat, unfortunately. And then this is all the corn husks. I'm just going to throw this in here. Another thing you can use is cardboard. Cardboard that's not uh, not shiny will go good in a compost bin. All right, and then once I get all that in there, I'm just gonna cover it up. I'm gonna pause this video, cover it up, and then uh, wrap this video up for you. All right, so I got everything in place. I got it covered up pretty good, and then uh, turned it a little bit, and that's it for this, uh, for this particular edition of organic material. And then, uh, so over time, this is just going to sit here and rot. And I'll come back periodically and, and give it a turn, turn each one of these. And uh, probably in the fall, I'll add some shredded leaves to it to add some more uh, carbon or brown matter to it. And uh, over time, this is really going to reward me with a lot of nutrient-rich organic matter. And I'm going to use it in my beds, and I'm going to work it into my pots. And it's, it's, uh, it's going to be a great, it's a great free resource that everybody should be taking advantage of. So there you go. I hope you like this video. Uh, plan on doing some more videos here coming up on uh, on maintenance and uh, things like that. that uh, fall projects that you can do around your around your garden to keep things interesting. Uh, you know, this, this is the time of year when things are starting to die off, and uh, you know it's it's a great time to start planning for next year. And that's one of the things that I love about fall and and winter is that I I uh, start planning for next year. All right, so this is Joe from the Northeastern Native Plant Digest. I hope you like this video. Appreciate all my subscribers. Uh, give it a thumbs up, share it, you know, and even more than that, and, uh, you know, just get out there and start your own compost pile. <laughs> and if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment below. I'll try to get back to all, of, uh, all the questions uh, as soon as I see them. And have a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.